almost all of them have reported no loss at all to their 20 minute power, right? None at all. Oh. Um, some have increased, some have actually reported a slight increase in their 20 minute power because they're much more stable on the seat. Yes. And, and almost all of them report an improvement in speed at their 20 minute threshold low because of the aerodynamic Aerodynamics. advantages, right? So welcome back to the 28th edition of the RCA Training Tip Show, where today we round out another bike fitting series with expert bike fitter, Neil Stanbury, who's been fitting road cyclists for around 10 years in conjunction with being a sports physiotherapist. So midfoot cleat position. This certainly wasn't a topic that I brought to Neil, nor was it a topic that you, the audience, brought to Neil. It was actually Neil himself who wanted to talk about this, and here's why. This is a topic which no one, almost no one, when I suggest it to them when they come in for a fit for whatever reason, almost no one's ever heard of it. So it's good to do a video on this because um, it is quite, from a biomechanical perspective, it's actually quite a logical thing to, to think about when you're, when you're cycling. So Neil, he's gonna break down for us both the pros, such as comfort, aerodynamics and speed, and the cons of riding with a midfoot cleat position and how you would go about getting the cleat into the middle of your cycling shoe. Now, Neil has kindly confirmed he'll be back for another round of bike fitting videos. So if there are any hot topics that you, the audience, would like us to cover in the next round, please put them below. And if you wanna ensure you don't miss those videos, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Now, before Neil gets into it, I like to remind everyone that the up-level road cycling course, I'm gonna be reopening the door to that program very shortly, which is gonna be a beta program. If you're not aware, the up-level road cycling course is for road cyclists that are keen to take their performance to the next level. And for those interested in being part of this beta relaunch program, I have an invite going out to my email newsletter list next week. So if you wanna jump on my email list, put a link below. Alternatively, you can download my free ebook, which will automatically put you on my email newsletter list. So let's get into it. So look, midfoot, um, technically speaking, strictly speaking, midfoot is where you divide the length of the shoe by two, measure out from the nose or the back, put a line, and you put the center of the cleat on that line. Wow. So the middle of the foot. Have you ever, right? have you ever done that? Absolutely, yeah. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. So, wow. yeah, I actually rode midfoot um, as an experiment for 18 months, many, many years ago, <laughs> and I quite liked it. <laughs> yeah, I had no problems. What about um, walking around at cafes? It would have been it a, is bit a bit awkward. <laughs> it is a bit weird to walk on, actually. Like a seesaw, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is a little bit odd to walk on, but, you know, that should be the least of your worries. But the idea behind midfoot is that as the cleat goes a long way back, the foot becomes really inherently stable on the pedal, right? So you're producing downwards force on the pedal and there's there's almost no effect of, of ankling or, or loading of the rear of the foot to drop the heel, that kind of stuff. So if you've got a person who's an extreme heel dropper like myself, riding midfoot just stabilizes their foot to an unbelievable extent and they, that can then reduce further issues further up the kinetic chain, right? Knee pain, whatever, whatever it is, lower back pain, instability, numbness of the feet, that type of stuff like we spoke about in one of the other videos. Now, when the cleat goes a long way back like this, there's a point where it gets a long way back and, and somewhere between there and midfoot, it's basically the same. So when the cleat is far enough behind the regular kind of cleat positions that we see with road shoes, it, it for all intents and purposes becomes midfoot, you know, when it gets close enough to being midfoot. So the idea behind it is your foot is very stable, your calf musculature, which would otherwise be used to stabilize the foot on the downstroke, just basically switches off. It just doesn't have to do anything, right, during the stroke which is great, um, but it has its downsides. So the upsides of midfoot, when the cleat is a long way back, your, your leg is effectively significantly shorter. So the effect is more pronounced if we've got a rider who's an aggressive toe pointer, like you're a fairly fairly decent toe pointer, not, mm. not off the charts. But if we gave you a midfoot cleat position, your seat height would have to go down probably 30 to 40 millimeters, which is quite substantial. Let's say that you're doing a time trial or a triathlon. Each centimetre that your head goes down, the bars can go down the same amount to keep the drop to the bars the same. So your frontal area, which you present to the wind, is reduced the lower your seat height is, mm -hmm. right? So the aerodynamic gains for, for like time trialling and that kind of thing can be pretty significant. 
Switching the calf off has some benefits, particularly for triathletes. They can get off the bike at the end of the bike leg and their calves are fresh because they haven't had to do anything. So they can run more effectively for the first 10, 15 Ks if they're doing a, an Ironman or something. They can get off the bike and their calves are much fresher. So mm. that can be pretty important, right? Now, people would say, well, you know, you're not using your calf. You're not getting all of the muscle, you know, energy delivery to the, to the shoe that you can. For steady state threshold or below threshold efforts, it seems to make no difference. And this is extremely unscientific, but in all the experimentation I've done with it over the years, both with myself and other people I know who've ridden midfoot, almost all of them have reported no loss at all to their 20 minute power, right? None at all. Oh. Um, some, have incre some have actually reported a slight increase in their 20 minute power because they're much more stable on the seat. Yes. And, and almost all of them report an improvement in speed at their 20 minute threshold low because of the aerodynamic advantages, right? So if you're doing a steady state time trial, pretty good, right? Downsides now. The downsides are that when you get out of the saddle and you're using your calf to spring, it doesn't feel that nice. It mm. feels choppy. You can't, you know, you, you're kind of a bit blocky at the bottom of the stroke, that type of thing, because you can't use your calf to, to attenuate the bottom of the stroke and spring naturally, right? So out of the seat feels a bit odd. You also do lose a little bit of your ability to accelerate really rapidly. And we spoke about this a bit in the cleat position yes. video. Yeah, the foot, as the cleat goes a long way back, it can be a slight detriment to your, your speed at which you can reach your maximal power output. Strangely though, the, the actual outright wattage that the rider produces in a flat out 10 second or 20 second effort doesn't seem to be affected a lot, but they seem to get there more slowly. And for crit racing and road racing, that can be a bit of a problem if there's a lot of surging efforts in the race where you have to change speed rapidly. Midfoot's not ideal, mm. yeah. So the other the other benefits of it are seat goes down, aerodynamics get better. It, it does help if you've got foot numbness that's really persistent, if you've got circulatory issues in your feet, it does help a lot. If you've got oddities if you've got like one foot that's significantly bigger than the other or a big leg length difference or something it can help to to stabilize certain types of riders and 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 reduce other issues because it takes the the foot's lever out of the pedal stroke it just kind of deletes that section of the of the biomechanical puzzle in terms of attaining midfoot cleat position there's a couple of ways you can do it the way that if you want a true midfoot most of the time what we what we still do is I actually modify the bottom of the shoes and you can only do this with certain shoes. We, we couldn't, for example, do it easily with your shoe here because of the, the design of this channel that's cut out in the middle. Mm. But essentially what we'll do is we'll create an epoxy, uh, like epoxy resin um, block in the center of the arch of the foot and we'll usually then sit a speed play base plate on it and this is a bit further back than it would be. But you can see how there'd be a small gap between that and the shoe. Mm. You fill that space up with epoxy and it's a bit convoluted. I use <laughs> I use a blue tack dam around it and pour the epoxy in through the top with a speed play base plate on it and then redrill the holes and put some new captive nuts inside the shoe to hold that in place. You can't really do it with a three bolt like a Shimano or a look cleat because it needs to sit curved on the bottom of the shoe. So we, we create an epoxy base for, for a speed plate base plate in the center of the arch of the foot and then screw it, screw the base plate straight on. These extender plates have the ability to move the cleat a long way back. So you can't really ever get full true midfoot out of one of these, mm. but it'll get it so far back that most of the benefits will come anyway. Your seat will go down a fair bit, the calf will be reduced a lot, but it won't really ever go to a true midfoot right. if you use one of those. Um, with three bolt pedal systems, this, this system that, um, that uh, a bloke in Switzerland is making is the best one that I've ever seen. Um, this is a three bolt version <sighs> of that, does the same thing. The three countersunk captive, uh, three countersunk holes here are where this, this bolts onto the bottom of the shoe. And then you can see he's got a, a triangle here and a triangle there for, for two more rearward placement positions of the cleat. One of them's 12 millimeters further back than standard and the other one is 24 millimeters. So that'll give you a fair bit of rearwards translation of the cleat. These are made by a bloke in Switzerland, as I mentioned, really high quality and um, I have no great affiliation with them except to say that they're the best, the best 
off the shelf version of, of moving the cleat a long way further back that I've ever seen. And right. they're, they're really high quality, very strong, that type of stuff, very well engineered. And so these can these can be used if you really don't want to go to speed place to do this. These can be used to move the cleat back and then back a long way. And again, you may not get to a true midfoot, but once you get 24 millimeters, you know, an inch further back for those American viewers, it becomes most most of the benefits of midfoot are there already once you get that far back, you know. So it doesn't technically have to be a complete midfoot position to, to give you most of the benefits of, of lack of calf engagement, better circulation through the feet, lower front end, lower seat height, all that stuff. Not so good for um, you know surgy bunch riding, um, yes. but uh, if, if, if you're a time trialist or a triathlete, Endurance rider? Yeah, yeah, Audax riding, that yep. type of stuff. Yeah, ultra endurance stuff. Um, I'm in the process of convincing um, Abdullah, the, the winner of the um, Trans Am, the vegan um, Melbourne boy who uh, rode across North America in 16 days or something to win the Trans Am, in the process of convincing him that moving to something like midfoot will have serious benefits for those long sub-threshold steady state efforts. Um, and yeah, for, for that type of riding, man, there's almost no downsides. Wow. Yeah. The aerodynamic gains alone at, at, at solid power outputs that you might do in a time trial or something like that uh, are often well worth any slight negatives that you might perceive, like the choppiness out of the saddle and that type of thing. Mm. Yeah. So that's midfoot in a nutshell. It's a bit of a weird one, um, but it shouldn't be as weird as it is. It should be more... It should be more common than it is. Yes. Yeah, and it, and people should recognise that this is a possible thing that you can do, um, even if you're just using off the shelf stuff and you don't want to go drilling holes in your shoes. Um, even using a speed plate, extender plate, or something like the Patrick cleats here to get the cleat a long way further back um, can 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 do some pretty cool things. Yeah. 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 If you had an, another bike that was your endurance bike. And you had another set of shoes, you could quite easily have two positions, yeah? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And they'd be, depending upon how much of it, like I dropped my heels a lot, so when I went to midfoot, my seat height stayed mostly the same. But if you're a decent toe pointer or something, you'll need to have the seat significantly lower and thus the bars lower at the of same course. So rate. So you need another yeah. bike essentially. But a lot of people do, they have their endurance bike for yep. going out for long days and they have their bike for bunch riding and yeah. if they do crits. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. It's a um it's a nifty little trick and it can have some serious benefits. Yeah. Yes. Good. Excellent. <laughs>